I often get asked to compare and contrast um, using RBAC versus using relationship-based access control, like what we offer in SpiceDB with OTSED. And the truth is, the question doesn't really make any sense. Um, relationship-based access control is a superset of RBAC. And basically anything that you can do uh, with a standard RBAC system, you're probably already doing um, with simple models in SpiceDB. So if I switch back to our very simple example, we call this in our docs, we call this our simple RBAC example. Um, and the reason is that writer and reader here are roles. And one of the things people miss when they talk about RBAC is the fact that RBAC, you have a role, you have a concept of a role that a user belongs to, and then the permissions that that role is granted are scoped to something. Right? In this case, what we have is we have a role that's scoped to an individual document. So when we say that uh, you know, document doc one reader user Jake, we're giving Jake the reader role on this particular document. Now, sometimes the definition for RBAC might be, I want to federate roles at an organizational level. Right? I don't want to pass things out doc by doc, but I want to pass them out to users across the organization. And so this is super natural um, in SpiceDB with relationship-based access control. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a reader. Uh, we're going to add an organization object, and we're going to add a reader of type user. We're going to add a writer of type user. And we're going to get rid of the reader and writer on the individual document. We're going to say that the document belongs to an organization or has a parent of an organization. And then we're going to say our parents writers, our parents readers. So now instead of saying doc one reader is Jake, we're going to say organization org one as a reader of Jake. And then we're going to say that document uh, first doc has a parent of organization org one. Okay, so now we can see that Jake is still allowed to view the document because he's a reader org wide, right? Um, and we can kind of just keep adding and hoisting and changing these role names wherever we want them to be uh, in order to give the user experience that we want for a particular application. Um, in some cases, you, you do only manage things org-wide. Um, like some of the software I can think of, we use like QuickBooks. And in QuickBooks, uh, a user has a role within the entire organization in the QuickBooks account. Uh, but other things like Google Docs, you're federating you're federating access to documents and information on a doc by doc basis. So that's what we mean when we say that RBAC is actually a superset of RBAC and that anything that you can do with RBAC, you can also do in RBAC. Um, but one thing that you may have noticed is that reader and writer are always being set by the schema writer. Right. So what if what if a organization wants to have a role that they determine what access that role has? Um, so in that case, we can actually hoist roles into the data plane as well. So we might say add a role. And here we're going to say um, we're going to give the role members, right? Um, so now here we can say, no. let's create our role, call it, I don't know, billing admin. And then the member is user that accountant, All right? So now the accountant is a billing admin, but we haven't given that any meaning yet, right? Um, so what if we had documents, right? And documents followed the normal thing, but what if we also had an invoice 
object. And an invoice object has view, right? Like, what does it mean to be able to view an invoice? What does an invoice belong to? Uh, an invoice might belong to an organization. And then here we might want to say that we, we, we want to separate the concepts of what the the individual roles are called from what the permissions are. So here we might add a relation for uh, view invoices. Right? And then here we could say that a roles members can be given the ability to view invoices. So now down here we can say parent view invoices. And right now, that accountant, let's see if that accountant can view an invoice. So first let's start by creating an invoice. Invoice, invoice 23, parent organization, org one. And then we already have a billing admin. So let's see if anybody can view this invoice. Okay, so right now nobody can view the invoice. And the reason that is, is because the organization has not yet chosen which roles should be allowed to view the invoices. So over here, what we can do is we can, at the organizational level, we can actually grant view invoices to role um, billing admin members of the billing admin role. And now that accountant is allowed to view invoice invoices. And you can imagine building up a user experience, a user interface where the user is allowed to click a button to create a new role. And they're allowed to call that role whatever they want. In this case, we called that role a billing admin. And then you can imagine a grid of checkboxes where the organization can go through and click a bunch of checkboxes giving permissions to various things that you can do on the platform to various roles. And we call this pattern user-defined roles. Uh, and you can kind of extend this sort of arbitrarily. And you can do it, again, you can do it at any level of the hierarchy, right? You could federate out permissions on um, an individual document basis. You can do it on an organization basis. In this case, we said that these roles would apply uh, would apply org wide. And that's kind of it. That's all it takes to model and create RBAC, uh, role based access control, inside of SpiceDB using relationship based access control as a scaffolding. I hope that was helpful. And I hope that really sort of shed some light on the fact that there is no tension between RBAC and RBAC. Reback is a 100% total superset of our back. Thanks.